Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura and I lost 120 pounds on a meat only carnivore diet. One big element to my weight loss and my success for the last four years that I've been eating this way has been intermittent fasting. I think in the carnivore community, oftentimes we really just hear about intuitive eating. We hear eat till you're hungry, stop when you're full. And while that is a great concept and can work for a lot of people, it definitely doesn't work for me. There is something broken in me that I don't have to be hungry to want to eat. I like to know true hunger and this way of eating has helped me recognize true hunger, but there is still this huge element of me that wants to sit on the couch at night and eat for no reason. And so something like intermittent fasting has been really crucial in not only losing weight, but also learning to recognize my true hunger versus boredom hunger. And then it's really helped me to be successful long-term. So in this video, I wanna to talk to you about who could benefit from some type of intermittent fasting or even like a 24 to 48 hour fast. I wanna talk about who should not be doing that. And then we'll get into some do's and don'ts and tricks that are helpful for me. The first thing I want to do is talk about who intermittent fasting might be helpful for. I can't make that decision for you. You have to decide based on your own personal context, your history with eating, and how those things are going to affect you. I just simply want to point out a few different people who have benefited from intermittent fasting. The first one is my husband. He was 300 pounds. He was type 2 diabetic with an extremely high A1C. He was maxed out on metformin. He had 11.9 A1C even after taking all those meds and his glucose was still out of control. He needed to incorporate things like intermittent fasting and a 36 plus hour fast in order to bring his blood sugar and A1C down. Another person that benefited from intermittent fasting was my mom. She's in her 60s. I have several videos on this channel um, interviewing her about what that looked like for her, but she also was type 2 diabetic. She was taking um, Victoza shots for her diabetes because metformin was no longer managing it. She has Hashimoto's. I know that is a concern for a lot of people when you're doing fasting, but because of her blood sugar issues, she needed to incorporate intermittent fasting as well. She was strict keto, then strict carnivore, and being extremely strict with all of her food. It wasn't until she started incorporating those 36 hour fasts uh, that she was able to finally lower her blood sugar and get off of all her diabetes medications. And finally, somebody like myself desperately needed intermittent fasting. I don't have to be hungry to eat. I can eat anytime, all day long, no problems. And so giving myself the guidelines of this is my fasting window or I'm going to eat today at lunch and then I'm not gonna eat until lunch tomorrow. That's a 24 hour fast. Having those guidelines still allowed me to eat adequate nutrition but it took away that mental aspect of just thinking I should be eating because it's meal time. And when it came to weight loss, doing daily intermittent fasting was helpful. And then I truly believe without proper occasional 48 hour fasts, I would not have lost the weight uh, or been able to maintain it like I do. I, really the goal is for us to use it as a powerful tool that it is, but not to overuse it. I will dive more into when you should break your fast and what negative aspects of fasting look like here in a little bit. But before we do that, I wanna give you some fasting do's. My first tip for fasting is to do supplement with electrolytes. That means things like sodium, potassium, magnesium. It also does not mean things like Smart Water, Powerade Zero, Gatorade Zero. Those do not have adequate electrolytes. When you are eating carbs, carbs are called carbohydrates because they hydrate your body and you hold water and you hold all those electrolytes and salt. When you are no longer eating carbs, whether you are keto or carnivore, your body flushes out all of that water weight. It also flushes out some of those electrolytes, which means that's why you see carnivores and people on keto eating a lot of salt and then supplementing with additional electrolytes. You need those things to avoid getting headaches, to avoid being tired and drained and lethargic. Like it can help give you better energy uh, and overall just feel better in your body to function properly. In the beginning, I was using electrolyte supplements every single day in order to kind of help my body adjust to not having carbs. Even after eating this way for the last four years and salting my food heavily, I still incorporate electrolytes on a regular basis when I'm traveling. When I'm doing anything beyond a 24 hour fast, I incorporate electrolytes and 
I live in Arizona when it's nice and hot here or when I'm traveling to a more humid environment. Anytime where I feel like I'm gonna be sweating a lot, we know I don't exercise a ton, but any type of burning extra energy or sweating extra, I make sure to incorporate more electrolytes. I'm really excited to partner with Element for this video. They provide an electrolyte packet that contains all of the magnesium, sodium, and potassium that you're gonna need and none of the sugar. I really appreciate their unflavored version. It tastes a little salty. I pour it in some ice with my water uh, and it's a great option for me. They also have some flavored options. Uh, I know a lot of people love putting their chocolate salt in their coffee. Uh, they also have some spicy flavors that my mom loves like a habanero or a mango chili. With these packets, I'm able to get none of the junk, none of the fillers. It's literally just the magnesium, sodium, potassium. Um, one of these in my water a couple times a day when I'm doing an extended fast or one of these after sweating a bunch can leave me feeling refreshed and replenish all of those electrolytes that I've just pushed out because I'm not eating the carbs to hold it all in my body. I definitely notice without supplementing electrolytes, I'll get muscle cramps when I'm sleeping at night, I can get headaches, I can feel drained, and having something like an Element Packet can make a huge difference in how I feel and my energy levels. The really great thing about Element is that it was started by people who truly understand what a low carb diet needs and the type of electrolytes you need for that. So it is perfectly formulated for people who are doing keto, carnivore, uh, and really anything in between who are doing low carb and need that additional electrolyte supplement. These packets contain 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of uh, potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium, and the flavored versions are sweetened with stevia. Right now, Element is offering all of my subscribers a free sample packet with any order, so you're able to get eight single serving packets, try all the different flavors when you place an order. Put the link for this deal in the description below, or you can go to drinkelement.com slash laurasfast. That's D-R-I-N-K. L-M-N-T dot com slash Laurasbath. This is a huge part of the dues. So using electrolytes that are going to give you adequate magnesium, sodium, and potassium is really important. And the packets are just too handy. I, I, I need to have the packets in my pocket at all times. <laughs> okay, my next tip is to stay busy. It may sound like a simple one, but if I have a day where I'm trying to do a 24 to 48 hour fast, and it just so happens to be a day where I am home at all day with nothing to do, it is a terrible day for me to be fasting. When I wanna try to push my fasting window a little bit or try something new with fasting, the days when I'm running errands, doing a bunch of stuff, um, really busy with the kids, I don't have time to eat anyway, those are the days that make it easier for me to incorporate fasting because I'm not stressed and worried about how am I gonna find time to eat. And then sometimes you get to the end of the day and you're like, I didn't even eat anything today, it's seven o'clock. Why would I try to force myself to eat something at seven just because I think that I have to? You know what, I'll just go to bed early. That's maybe a sub tip is go to bed early and then you know that you can make it till the morning. That's a great way to kind of stretch that fasting window for the first time. Another tip to help you increase your fasting window and just overall have a great fasting experience is just to watch for warning signs. A little bit of hunger is not a warning sign that you should break a fast. Some of those warning signs include headaches that will not go away after you've supplemented with electrolytes, uh, dizziness, really just like achy feeling, feeling like you're gonna fall asleep. Those are not great signs and you should supplement with electrolytes and then eat something. Try again next time and be a little more proactive with your electrolytes. Another tip to having a positive fasting experience is to be excited about the food that you're breaking your fast with. If I'm gonna fast for 48 hours, I love getting a ribeye, spoiling myself with a little extra piece of meat and knowing that like, okay, I can hold out. I'm gonna look forward to this. Like I can, I can wait till tomorrow to eat that ribeye. That ribeye was so exciting. I'm gonna have a ribeye with some bacon and some butter on top. Like all of those things that I get excited about it almost like gives me uh, something to look forward to. If I just thought I was gonna break my fast by eating a bowl of ground beef or a bunch of chicken, that would not be very exciting to me and it makes me just wanna give up in the middle of it. So it sounds simple again, but it's part of that mindset that I really push myself of, hey, just one more hour, you can go one more hour because you have this ribeye waiting for you at the end of it. That's a big part of it. You shouldn't be fasting if it causes you to emotionally stress uh, and go off the rails and eat too much and just really throws you off track. But telling myself that like food is there. I can eat food if I want to eat food. Right now my body is healing. It's doing some work. It's losing weight. It's like it's doing all the things that it needs to do. It's a great thing for me. And so I, food is there when I want to get it. There's this scarcity mentality sometimes that we get in of like I'm fasting. There's no food. I can't have food for 48 more hours and it causes us to panic a little bit. Like 
Food is there if you want it. If you decide to end your fast and eat early, great, that's not a fail. There, this is the type of pressure that you need to not put on yourself. This is another positive tip is don't put too much pressure on yourself. This can all be taken one day at a time, one hour at a time. Try something new. If you normally are eating two meals a day, just try once a day and see what happens. If you change your mind and you eat meat, there's no failure in that as long as you're not going and eating a half a box of donuts because you pushed yourself for too far, okay? So there's so many more don'ts that I wanna get into. Um, so we're gonna start talking about that. Things you should not do when you're fasting and things that are just not helpful for you. The first one is don't overeat before a fast. Sometimes people have this mindset of feasting and fasting, and I've used that term a lot myself in the past, but I think it has taken on a new meaning in the community lately. Before you go into fasting, if I were to overeat, all it's gonna do is make me hungrier and make fasting harder for me. Our family went to Fogo de Chao yesterday. A lot of times in the past, I would eat a lot at Fogo de Chao, and then I would go right into a 48 hour fast. In some ways, because my body has consumed so much food, it like kicks up my metabolism and I'm like burning all that food off from Fogo uh, and this all you can eat meat buffet, if you don't know what that is, then my body's like looking for more food very quickly. And so eating tons and tons before you go into a fasting isn't just gonna like make you not hungrier for longer. Right, that might work. I won't be hungry for dinner because I had so much meat for lunch, but if that's you can't eat enough in one sitting to sustain you for 48 hours nor would that be the point. The point is for your body to burn stored fat, to burn the cakes that I ate because it was a Tuesday in my 20s or all of the things that I've eaten that I'm trying to get rid of. The point of doing a fast is not to just eat so much that you aren't hungry for 48 hours. Another tip is don't overeat after a fast. I try to plan a normal sized meal, even depending on how long the fast is, I might have a smaller meal than normal and then know that a couple hours later I can eat again. If fasting is causing you to sit down and gorge afterwards or you're eating tons and tons and you feel like you can never get full again, then maybe fasting isn't right for you and it's not something that you should be incorporating. You need to work on being more consistent at just eating the proper amounts day over day than trying to Take a break for a couple of days if it's causing you to just sit down and never be able to stop eating at the end of it. That's really important. Knowing that I can have a small amount to break my fast, food is gonna be there for me when I want it again. If I get hungry in a couple of hours, I can eat more food, it's not a big deal. Take that pressure off of yourself. Another tip that I have for fasting is don't fast too often or too frequently. I think sometimes we think that more is better. This fasting was great. A 24 hour fast was great. This 48 hour fast was great. I lost three pounds. I'm gonna do more of them. I'm gonna do three in a week. I'm gonna do alternate day fasting, like slow down. More is not always better. It's one thing if you're eating adequate food and you throw in a, a 48 hour fast. Your body's been burning calories, it's doing great, it's, your metabolism's working great, you skip a day and it like keeps going right along. The minute you start doing more and more and more 48 hour fast, your body is like, wait, I'm not getting adequate nutrition in between, I need to like slow my metabolism down a little bit. And so trying to fast more frequently isn't always gonna be as beneficial as just incorporating it once a week or a few times a month, depending on your goals and where your body is. You especially need to be careful of this if you can't eat enough in between. If you're trying to do alternate day fastings and you're eating a thousand calories in between, that is a quick trip down the path to hormone issues, metabolism issues, um, hair loss issues. All of those things have happened to me personally and that's where I'm speaking from is my personal experience that more is not always better. And so look at the balance of how can you enjoy your life? How can this way of eating be sustainable for you? How can you have a fasting window that's gonna be beneficial for you? But you shouldn't be incorporating fasting if it's only going to cause you setbacks. I have friends who are coming from a history of disordered eating and something like an extended fast or putting a clock on their eating window is not going to be helpful for them. It is going to cause them to kind of panic and eat more and it's definitely going to set them back. They should not be doing fasting. Another don't that I have is don't start with an extended fast. Remember that fasting is a muscle. You have to work up to that. If you're currently doing a 16 hour fast every day and it's going great for you, that doesn't mean you're ready for a 48 hour fast. What it means is maybe you should try going to an 18 hour window for a, a week. Maybe it only take for you a few days to adjust to that feeling more natural. Then you can try doing a 20 hour fast. Then 
Try a 24 hour fast one time. Eat lunch one day, wait till the next day, and that's a 24 hour fast. If that goes well, it doesn't mean keep going 24 hours. It means go back to doing that two meals a day for a couple days and then go back and you kind of mix it up so your body's just not doing the same thing every day. My suggestion on making this sustainable and realistic for your life in like a fun way that we all wanna live our lives is not just to jump in and start with a 48 hour fast or a seven day fast, which I have done in the past and I don't know if I would do again. Like to me, something like 48 gives you all the benefits that you would need to reduce your blood sugar, to uh, lower your insulin, to help with your weight loss, and the, I personally didn't find any benefits for going longer than that uh, often. Another big tip that I have that kind of goes along with the last one of just not jumping right into things is don't use fasting for punishment. If you are coming off of carbs and you think a quick way to reset yourself is to fast, I promise you it's only gonna be harder for you mentally and physically, and it's not gonna set you up for success long term. Our goal with all of this is to find a way to live healthy lives at a healthy weight and to be having a great time long term. What does it matter if you're able to drop 10 pounds really quickly because you just stopped eating for a few days if then that's not sustainable for you and then you end up gaining 20 back because it was done in a way that wasn't healthy. For me, fasting always works best when I have been eating consistently, when I have been not snacking, when I'm in a really good place with food, and sometimes when like food doesn't sound very good to me, like I've been eating two meals a day, day after day, two meals a day, and I'm like, ugh, nothing sounds good. Well, you know what? That might mean that my body's ready for a break and I'll do a 48 hour fast and then like, woof, food sounds really good, meat sounds really good to me, uh, and that's a quick way for me to kind of like reset my mental appetite, my physical appetite, and boost up that true hunger again, versus when I've been in this routine of just like eating a couple meals a day because it's habit. If I've been snacking a lot, if we're coming off of vacation, or I've been eating out in restaurants a ton, I've been eating three meals a day plus snacks, even though all those foods are carnivore, it's still gonna make fasting more difficult for me because I've been eating so much more frequently. So you really wanna try to work up to doing any type of fasts. Quickly, I wanna talk about what breaks a fast for a lot of people. Water, salt, unflavored electrolytes is as bare bones as they go. And I think that's a great way to do it. But you also have to be able to stay on it longer. And so if you are somebody who drinks coffee, coffee can be a great option for you. I'm not a coffee drinker, so that wasn't it. But be aware of that adding things like heavy cream, butter, any kind of like calories to that coffee is going to break your fast. Um, I know a lot of people, the sweetener thing is, it is what it is. I have no issues with some sweeteners occasionally. So if you put a little sweetener in your coffee, um, but because it has no calories, I don't think that's gonna affect you. If you're drinking something like broth, butter, not only will those break a fast, but for me, they would make me hungrier. I am so much better off fasting and exercising that muscle if I'm eating nothing than if I were to have something like broth or a very small amount of food that's going to spark up my hunger levels, um, give me that little blood sugar spike and then make me hungrier. So stay away from anything that's gonna have calories, I think is the best way to do it. Uh, if you're having like an unsweet tea with some sweetener in it, if you're having some coffee with some electrolytes, obviously you need the electrolytes. That's important as well. You need electrolytes while you're fasting, um, but really just stay away from anything that's gonna have calories in it. I think there still can be benefits if you are taking some type of medication that requires you take it with food. There still can be benefits to fasting, eating a small amount, taking your medication that you need to, obviously follow what you're supposed to be doing from your doctor, um, but you just know that it might make you a little bit hungrier. So I still think there's benefits that it's not gonna take you as long to get back into that deep fasting mode from eating a small amount of food with your medication than if you were to eat a full size meal. So just understand how it's making you feel and then try to really work your intermittent fasting schedule into your life. And I think that's kind of a great thing to wrap up on and to say is that this has to work for your life. You can't force yourself to fit an intermittent fasting window that has you eating when you're not available to eat. Like my, you know, just because somebody on the internet tells you that the ideal fasting window is these hours during this time, you should be eating here. If that doesn't work for your life, it's not gonna be sustainable for you and it's not gonna be something that you're ever gonna stick to. And so 
with any type of fasting, sometimes I have a fast plan and my friend calls and says, you wanna go to lunch? And I'm like, absolutely, because I'm not gonna pass up having quality time with a friend just because it's not within my intermittent fasting window. Um, you have to make this sustainable for you, for your life long term. And I say that with food, with fasting, with exercise, with anything that you do. Our goal is to be healthy and happy long term. And I hope that things like this channel are just giving you that like realistic approach so that you can hopefully find not the rules of the diet, not the rules of what you're supposed to do, not the best, most ideal way to do things, but how you can adjust all of those things, know the most ideal, but then adjust it to make it work in your life. And that's gonna look very different for all of us. So I hope you find that. I hope you are happy and healthy uh, and finding what works best for you. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. And if you are looking for more exclusive content from me, early access to videos, once a week live streams, challenges, we're actually starting a new challenge in my locals group soon. You can come check me out on locals. Uh, I will put the link in the description description in the comments and that is locals.com slash Laura East Bath. and it's just a community where people who are looking for this realistic long-term way of eating approach can hang out get to know each other we're doing a meetup uh, coming up soon so if you want to come hang out with us or chat on a regular basis come check me out on locals thanks guys